Louisiana has been consistently losing land to the sea. And losing this land means the storms are getting closer and they're coming into the cities and they're coming into the spaces where people want to reside. But things are deteriorating. We're losing our barrier islands. The storms are getting stronger. It's more dangerous to live here. The winds are stronger. We're having more and more storms every year. So it's important for, for us to really think about climate change and to think about how what we do impacts the climate that we live in, but just face the reality that things are changing and we have to do something about it. I'm a Filipino American. I've lived my most of my life in New Orleans. And when I was young, we'd go fishing around Lake Bourne and we would go to areas around St. Malo. And I knew nothing about the history of St. Malo. It was just marshland. It's still just marshland. But to know that in this marshland, there's a story that was not passed down, right? There's a history that has not been shared for generations. The fact that these stories were not shared, that these stories were forgotten and have to be rediscovered. When they should have been important to my family, they should have known about St. Malo, and maybe they did, but they didn't share it, right? It didn't get passed down. St. Malo was always a perilous space regarding storms, but it was also the place where fish, shrimp, and oysters were available. So this space was an opportunity for a Filipino fishermen to make a living and make substantial profits if they could survive the storms, if they could handle the weather coming up without notice. So they lived in the space where most other fishermen would not there were storms every 10, 15, 20 years. Anything that was attempted was destroyed. And so this space is a barrier for New Orleans, and it always was. It's the barrier that protects the city from tidal surges. So there was a storm in 1893 that destroyed St. Malo. And in that storm, many people died. The survivors, when they came ashore, they were saying, I'm not going back. I can't do this anymore. So there was this migration, you know, the climate impacts where people live. And there was a decision that they would find a, another place to live. St. Malo was destroyed again and again. People went back because this was an opportunity for them to make money. It's a fishing industry where people will go to spaces that could be dangerous if there's an economic advantage and they'll take the risk. And so they kept rebuilding the village in some form or another because it was the best space to be protected and still be close to the source of the fish and shrimp. When I go to St. Malo now, the bayou isn't nearly as narrow as it used to be, it's wide. They put rocks around to try and save the land. They built dikes to kind of protect the marshland from the lake, from the beating of the waves. So they're making attempts to preserve what exists now. But what is described in the stories about these high lands and these points where trees were growing, you don't see much of that anymore. You really just see 
marsh grass. And in the winter, it's beautiful because it's golden marsh. So it is a beautiful site, but no one lives out there. The fishing camps are much closer into shore. Now with motorized boats, you can access this space more easily. So no one would want to stay out there because whatever you build would be destroyed by the next storm. The marker is important as a touchstone for those other stories. 68 words, but the, the conversations around those words is what is getting the story out and making people reconnect with their Filipino American heritage in Louisiana. And also making people question, why don't I know these stories? What other stories don't I know about that might be significant to me? What other histories are hidden, you know, in my own backyard? I think it's important to, to address climate change, both at the national and the local level. Something has to be done to encourage climate activism. The impact of current storms is that we're losing more of our storytellers before we can hear their stories. Climate really does impact the movement of people from Louisiana, and in particular, the people moving from the spaces that are important to them and taking with them the stories of those spaces and the history of those spaces. And when they move from Louisiana, naturally those stories are less impactful in another space, particularly in Louisiana where documents get lost in storm, photographs are lost in storm. You know, it's like what remains from St. Malo? Nothing but the stories we tell about. And so it's the stories of the people that we're still trying to collect, even though it's a hundred years removed. And sometimes we have to reconstruct the stories from all these little fragments of stories. And so we're able to kind of tell the story in a way that people can understand. <laughs>